What if the cure for loneliness was as easy as swallowing a smooth little pill? We hit the earth streets to find out. If you went to the doctor and the doctor offered you a pill that could cure loneliness, would you take that pill? Probably not. No, I would not take it. I don't think I would. It feels like a very artificial solution. I don't think I have a use for drugs that would prevent loneliness. I don't think I need a pill to help me cure loneliness. I definitely would not take that medicine. Well. Case closed. Shortest demystifying science episode ever. See you later, human. Wait, 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 wait. I, I think they're missing something. What? You'd take a pill to cure loneliness? Just hear me out. What does loneliness actually mean? It's a discrepancy between an individual's preferred and actual social relations that leads to the negative experience of feeling socially isolated even when they're among family and friends. Okay, that's pretty much what I thought. So, you think that loneliness pills are actually going to help a person have the social relations that they want? Or just make them okay with being alone? Because that doesn't seem like what humans want. You don't value the relationships in your life and the people that you get to be around as much if you don't have those times when you wish you were around people and you know the sadness of being alone. It definitely gives you like insights in your life and what's going on and what's not and helps you discover more of what you want. Look, the pull yourself up by your bootstraps approach is fine for someone who's only been lonely for a few hours. But consider someone who's been isolated for weeks, months, maybe even years. That person's brain has been physically remodeled by the process. What? You've been dissecting humans again? What do you know about brain remodeling? Let's get an actual neuroscientist on the phone. I think I know the perfect person. Hold on. Dr. Moriel Zelikowski. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Hello. Hey. We hear that you study the mechanics of emotion. I do. Yeah, I study how the brain encodes um, emotional information and processes that to generate um, emotional behavior. So, you know, if you've been isolated for a long period of time, many, many things change in a negative way. Um, this has been documented basically across every single species. One of hallmark thing is animals become much more violent. Um, and so that's kind of one thing you see, but you also see this increase in anxiety and depression and things like that. Um, and so what we found is this really involves tactile signaling in different parts of the brain. And some of these regions aren't even connected. Okay, so loneliness changes the brain, but why can't you just take your changed brain and crank up the search for friends? What? Because loneliness changes you in a way that can be totally paralyzing. Like, if you've got a migraine, you take a pill before trying to go anywhere, right? Well, come on, headaches are way different than loneliness. I mean, the humans certainly seem to think so. They put a different moral spin on treating emotions versus treating pain, but both are just medical remedies, aren't they? I guess, but blotting out your need for other people seems really dicey. Like, remember that one guy I talked to in the park? It would be great, because then I wouldn't have to seek companionship. And that would free up a zone in my life. I go out looking for others to hang out with, and if I wasn't lonely, I wouldn't have to go out at all. It'd... See what I'm saying? I... No, you're missing the most interesting part here. He's only going out and meeting people because he's lonely. That's not a good foundation for friendship. But what's the alternative? Pairing up the lonely seems better than not pairing at all. Yeah, as long as they have more than just shared loneliness as the basis of their friendship. So you're telling me you're going to start taking loneliness pills? No, I'm not lonely. 